Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Major developments yesterday as rumours are starting to emerge that the deal is done. Aspas will be joining MIBR going into next season. Zelsis absolutely gives his take on the matter, says that it's probably a positive thing for the VCT in general and for the Americas, but the way that he describes MIBR as a team has not necessarily had some people especially happy about the situation. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. How good may or may not that roster be, especially given the roster that is apparently being formed around Aspas going into 2025? Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. First of all, let's get back to the 10 Valorant Asia Invitational. So we saw, of course, one of the final single round games from the round robin side. FPX go down to town. Now, yes, FPX had a substitute coming in, but um, it still was not a good tournament for them really at all. And they certainly will go away from it thinking, okay, well, um, you know, some improvement may be necessary here. But Talon, they get the 13-8 victory on the Haven. Even. They therefore advanced through to the next round of the playoffs and it turned out that the quarterfinals was therefore DRX against FPX and this was a 13-5 on the Abyss. So um, yeah, clean cut. FPX of course bringing in Jishuan here as um, you know, their substitute effectively for the tournament so maybe they weren't expected to do that well but still it wasn't really pretty especially because it's not like this new DRX team in my opinion is you know setting the world alight but it's early days for all of these rosters but um, nonetheless exciting to see the outcome. Outcome. So after DRX took down FPX, they then of course went on to play Talon Esports. And this was a very telling performance here from Talon potentially in the grand scheme of what we can expect from the season. So we know that Primi, he came into this team towards the end of last season and was very impressive. But over the two maps they played against DRX, this is a DRX team that made some controversial changes, trying to improve for next season. And of course, they will have some potential to execute that in the future. But Talon completely destroyed them here. This was 13-4 on the Ascent, not even close. And the Sunset was 13-4 as well. So um, absolutely dominant. Talon dominated pretty much the entire time in the game. And Primi especially, I mean, Cruz was great. Like, the entire talent team looked really crisp. But um, Primi was the superstar of this performance again. I mean, this is pretty absurd as well. In terms of first blood engagement, he was 8-0. So, you know, we know what Ten said about Primi the other day. And it was high praise indeed. Ten said that Zekin is the most mechanically gifted player in the Americas. And that is probably true for Primi in the Pacific. Which is um, quite the statement given that he's only just coming to the league. But there is no doubt that the talent is there. And if Primi can play at this type of level... He can be a serious force against anyone in World Valorant, and so potentially can Talon Esports themselves as the team. So, you know, here we go with Primi on the Neon starting out the rounds. And sure, this is against an Eco, but still, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, this was super crisp. And I love the patience as well with which he plays this, right? I guess we can just go slow mo here on Twitter real quick to see how, you know, he gets the first kill, moves over, and it's not like he, you know, tries to spray transfer or anything. He just calmly moves his aim over, gets down the second headshot. He actually, you know, they all kind of line up from at the end of the day. And then, of course, he closes out the final kill as well after just taking that down real quick. So, yeah, the mechanics here for Primi are definitely right up there. I mean, this is just the slow-mo. And then I'll play it in full speed for you guys again here in a second. But, um, yeah, like when you watch this guy play, you could definitely tell there's something pretty special about his gameplay. So, um, yeah, here we go. Another full screen, full playback speed version of that fight. I mean, what is this? Basically three seconds probably two and a half three seconds it takes him to get this ace so um, yeah you can just tell the mechanical ability is there now let's hit the refresh on this real quick we have a genji victory so tana went to the grand finals they played genji and they've just lost here two to one so Caron, munchkin foxy Knight, texture and yoman and this is pretty much the expected outcome of some regard of the new Gen G roster, right? The Fox and I pickup, I really liked. You guys know that. And um, he did well here. The Yoman pickup was the question mark to me. And, well, I think there are still question marks on that to me. But um, still, they looked pretty good. And Primi didn't have his best series here. On He was even on the chamber, on the bind, which is kind of exciting to see. And they did end up winning this map. But I was just really impressed by Gen G on this one, right? Because, like, they played excellently this series. And I think they've shown some some good promise here, Genji, that they can be 
you know, maybe as successful as last year's lineup. I love the Fox and Nine pickup, certainly on the final map Lotus. Fox and Nine was all over the shop. And, um, you know, replacing Meteor potentially quite well. And we'll see whether, uh, you know, how well they go this season. But I think both of these teams are definitely rosters to watch. The final map was an absolute bloodbath, as you guys can tell here on the Lotus. But um, until that point, it was a very competitive series and tournament. So we're excited to see both of those teams in action next season. But um, yes, at the end of the day, it was a Genji victory, then Talon Esports, then DRX, then FPX to close out the tournament. So um, yeah, I think quite telling potentially, certainly on the DRX side maybe, and the Talon side, as to how good they might end up being going into the new season. But let's talk about the big updates in the Americas. So um, Furia are signing Heat. That seems to now be a done deal. They reached an agreement with Crew Esports. That's now happening. But the other big update that Bruno Povaleri drops yesterday is the following. The interest now becomes an official proposal, a contract offer. MIBR reaches an agreement with Le Vuitton to hire Aspas for the next competitive season. The Brazilian organization has the yes from the Argentine organization and is now looking to reach an agreement with the player. So um, it seems like the buyout number is effectively agreed. Now they've just got to, you know, agree to Aspas, you know, whatever he wants from like a salary perspective and whoever his team is going to be. But um, this is a big deal in competitive Valorant, right? Because we knew for some time now, really, that Aspas, despite being arguably the best player in the world, certainly, um, you know, maybe the highest impact player at times in World Valorant. And sure, you never get as good as Aspas in terms of like his numbers and his performance without some help from the team, right? Like, the team has to be structured around that in the same way that maybe it was for Ye on Optic back in the day when he was delivering those numbers. So, you know, I think it might be quite exciting to see Aspas and Ye, two players who at one time and maybe still are on some level, absolute best of the best players playing for organizations that on paper aren't exactly top of the line. And we knew, I think, that Aspas was wanting to leave Le for quite a while. And, well, we weren't sure where he was going to go. Initially, the rumor was, well, how about Bleed over in the Pacific region because they have the cash, but it turned out they didn't have the cash. It was all a kind of smoke and mirrors, house of cards, apparently, anyway. And then he was like, okay, where else is he going to go? Could Dragon Ranger Gaming give the offer? But the reality was that Lev had bought out Demon 1 to replace him. So, you know, presumably Lev needed some money back for Aspas to actually make ends meet on that regard. There was then a possibility, maybe, that Aspas wasn't going to go anywhere and they were going to keep him on the bench because um, there were only certain teams that could potentially match Aspas's buyout number because, you know, Aspas wanted to go. It's not like... Lev have decided to get rid of him. It's Aspas wanted to leave that organization. And I think that is, for me, the most questionable thing of all, right? Because Aspas is going to join for the new season a brand new team that on paper is weaker than Leviathan. Leviathan didn't get rid of him, like, uh, well, to our understanding anyway, Aspas wanted to leave. He wasn't happy with the team, the chemistry, the culture, whatever, and he wanted to go. And fair enough. But um, at the same time, because of that, the relationship was potentially tarnished and broken, and now he's out of a team that potentially is better than his new team. But does this make things fascinating for next season's league? Absolutely. And as Elsa says, I've seen a lot of jokes about this, but this is so good for the VCT. The fact that a bottom feeder team, now, of course, you know, bottom feeder team at MBR, he's not exactly wrong. I mean, technically, bottom feeder is just one of the weaker teams in the league but it's still you know could be considered relatively insulting just landed a name and player like Aspas is insane I feel like this also opens a lot of opportunities for MIBR like whether they stay for Brazilian whether they go international like Lev I'm excited he says so I don't think Zelsis is wrong I think the way that he kind of describes it maybe annoyed Frod a little bit who's working with that team and uh, Frod the reply says don't poop in the office I'll be shutting off the lights because I think that maybe MIBR and Sentinels they share some facilities in the same place so um, I think that's what Frod's getting at. But uh, anyway, it might be our Frod, maybe not so happy of being referred to as, as follows. But um, is Elsis wrong? Not necessarily right. I think it does make things interesting that we have potentially Yay on Evil Geniuses and we have Aspas potential on MIBR. But um, and how can he do on that team? Obviously, it depends to some degree on his teammates. It's not just an individual game at the end of the day. And um, you know, he was then replying and saying, I couldn't see Aspas going. They were not wanting to be competitive. I hope MIBR does right by him and builds properly, whether that's Brazilian, whether that's otherwise. But um, the latest rumor is as follows. So um, potentially, and this is why the Norseworth thing is quite interesting to me, because you guys remember when Norseworth got kicked, like I think it was basically this time last year, last December sometime I think it was.
was when there was all that Lev drama before the season began. The rumour was that the coaching staff were pushing for that, but not necessarily the players, not necessarily Aspas. And, you know, now it's pretty rumoured that, uh, well, basically Aspas is going to go in and he's going to select the players that he wants on his team. So whether that's going to be a good idea or bad, because there are many great players and, you know, great players that want to play with certain players that don't necessarily always choose the best teammates. So we'll see if that happens here. I'm kind of inclined to believe that it probably will happen here. But um, yeah, we'll see what MRBR do. Because obviously, if you're going to buy Aspas, pay this amount of money, you're not going to try not to be competitive. You're going to feel the team that you think is going to be able to win, you would think. At least a team that Aspas is confident can win. And maybe that could be one of the same thing. So it's early days to determine who Aspas's teammates are going to be. Once they've got the official contract locked down and secured, then I'm sure those questions are going to be answered shortly afterwards. But yes, it does now seem that that MIBR Aspas is going to be a thing and everyone else who was formerly of the roster is now under serious questions because Aspas is coming in and he's uh, well changing the picture in his own image but very much interested your thoughts as ever on all of this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time uh Ritro, thank you so much man appreciate the three months for the tier one dude oh yeah nah 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 how's he that calm Wait, that's that was nice. That was real nice. <laughs>